Hello and welcome to this video lecture series on mechanical translational systems. The outline for these uh, lectures is as follows. We'll go through some assumptions that I have about prior knowledge for the listener. Uh, secondly, we'll talk about some concepts that will be helpful in solving these types of problems. And then third, we'll work through a number of problems. Okay, here are some assumptions that I'm making. A, that you have basic circuit analysis knowledge. B, you're familiar with impedance concepts. C, you've heard of the terminology of effort versus flow. And D, you have used conservation laws in solving mechanical systems. Mainly, some of the forces acting on the body uh, is equal to zero. And the extension of that, in other words, D'Alembert's rule, which turns a statics problem into a dynamics problem. So let's talk a little bit about impedance. Impedance is defined as flow divided by effort. For signals, or in other words flows and efforts, um, currents, voltages, etc., of the form E to the ST. S can be real, it can be imaginary, it can be complex, and this leads to the following types of signals. DC signal, exponentially increasing or decreasing, sinusoidal signal, as well as dampened sinusoids. So for any system that has those types of responses, uh, naturally, that would be all linear time invariant systems, and all systems that are driven by that type of signal and are also linear time invariant, we can use impedance to uh, define uh, the flow effort relationship for uh, each of its elements. So, for example, we have our three mechanical translational elements, the spring, the viscous damper, and the mass. And you see the impedance expressions for each. For the spring, it's K, the spring constant, divided by S. For the viscous damper, it's just B, the damper, co the viscous coefficient. Um, and uh, for the mass, it's S squared times M. Just a note on Hooke's Law. You're familiar with F equal KX, where X is the displacement. And we can write, we can arrive at the impedance for the spring by replacing X with the integral of the velocity. And then if the velocity is of the form E to the ST, as we will assume here, then when you take the integral of the velocity, you get a 1 over S term back. That combines with the K out in front, and that now multiplies what is essentially just what we started with, the velocity, V of T. And now we can relate the force back to the velocity through this constant, K over S, which is defined as our impedance, because it is the ratio of force to velocity, but it is valid only for um, forces and flows, forces and velocities that are of the form e to the st. Next, let's talk about effort versus flow. So we'll use effort and flow to help um, exercise some analogies between, or analogs between electrical and mechanical systems. So on the electrical side, we have that the effort is voltage, the flow is coulombs per second, or current. On the mechanical side, the effort is force, or newtons, and flow is velocities, velocity, or meters per second. Finally, let's talk about conservation law and D'Alembert's rule. So in statics problems, you've seen that the sum of the forces acting on a body needs to equal zero. If it does not, then the mass is not in equilibrium, and there must be some net force that is producing acceleration on the member. Well, we can extend that to solving actual dynamic problems where things are moving, uh, velocities are changing in time. Uh, if we sum all of those static forces, and, and in addition, we add the inertial forces and sum those to zero, so MA or MV dot. And now we will rewrite it as we did before, which is just simply sum of all the forces F sub I is equal to zero, but where F sub I includes all inertial forces on the system. This is equivalent to KVL for circuits. So in summary, the assumptions we have talked about 
are that you're familiar with electric circuits, you're familiar with impedance concepts and impedance of common mechanical translational elements, you're familiar with effort and flow terminology, and you now are familiar with uh, D'Alembert's rule as it relates to summing forces in a free body diagram.